Are you currently dealing with shoulder pain and stiffness that's worse first thing in the morning and gets better as you move around, especially if you're over the age of 50? There's a good chance you're dealing with shoulder arthritis. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Dr. Zach Buett here at Performance Sport and Spine in Seattle, Washington. In today's video, we're going to break down this condition, what it is and what it isn't, how it's more than just a wear and tear mechanism, and why exercise is our best option to resolve it. The shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint, and it's the mobile joint in our entire body. And it's made up of two bones. So you've got the big bone of your arm called the humerus, and then this bone, which is the shoulder blade or the scapula. And this joint right here is called the glenohumeral joint, and that's your shoulder joint. Now with shoulder arthritis, there's stuff that happens within this joint that can cause stickiness and stiffness. And since this joint is the most mobile joint in your whole body, when you can't use it, things like getting dressed or reaching overhead becomes very problematic and it can be very frustrating. These arthritic changes are more prevalent or increase as people get older. When we look at studies of x-rays, about one in five people over 65 will have these changes to the shoulder. So it's pretty common. Fortunately, these exercises at the end of the video are really helpful. So how do you know if you have this? Well, the most common presentation for shoulder arthritis is a localized deep pain to the shoulder. There may be associated stiffness and a loss of range of motion, most specifically in abduction or raising your arm out to the side or external rotation of the shoulder. Because of those changes, there can be called this thing called crepitus, which is like popping and snapping of the shoulder. It can really freak people out. And then lastly, there can be night pain, especially if you lay on that shoulder with more advanced cases. Now we're gonna give you the four cardinal signs or the most common signs for this condition. So the first thing is pain that has a gradual onset. This doesn't happen suddenly, it happens over time. Secondly, stiffness and a loss of range of motion. Thirdly, that crepitus, that popping or snapping, and then lastly, there may be some weakness because what happens is the shoulder gets stiff, so you use it less, which causes inhibition and the rotator cuff can get weaker. So the more you hurts, the less you use it, which causes the problem to kind of cycle. So we got to kind of gradually strengthen it without irritating it. If you've enjoyed the video so far, make sure to go down there and click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and then don't forget to turn on notifications so you can check out new content coming out. Also, there's some sweatshirts and t-shirts available if you're interested. Now we're going to talk about what arthritis is and how it's caused. So classically, we've kind of thought of this as this wear and tear, kind of like a machine, you're just kind of grinding it down. Well, it turns out it's actually a complex biological process involving many things, including tissue metabolization, anatomical and physiological functions, inflammation, and loss of function. So we look at this chart here. This is our old view, kind of a wear and tear injury-based model. And that is part of it. But it's also more complex than this, involving metabolic syndrome, lipids, and kind of general health. So you have to kind of think of this as a more complex picture, which is why exercises can help so much because they can both help the muscle strength, but also make the joint and the body healthier. Now we're going to start the exercise portion of this video. But with arthritis, it's kind of a continuum from mild, moderate to severe. So often with these, you'll kind of find that you can stretch into it, and as you slowly go, your range of motion will improve. However, there's gonna be some people with severe arthritis that's really tough, and you might find that there's like a hard end range, and if you push into it, your pain only gets worse. For those people, you can't increase your range of motion. Just try to strengthen within that limited range of motion. If you push too hard, you're gonna flare it up and cause problems. Exercise is the pendulum arm swing. So it's a lightweight bent over. You're gonna use the weight and kind of swing in small circles, both clockwise and counterclockwise. With this exercise, the goal is to try to get a bigger circumference and try to increase the circle of your arm as far as you can without increasing your pain. Next is a shoulder blade squeeze. So we're gonna squeeze our shoulder blades together with those muscles. So think about pinching your shoulder blades together towards your spine, hold for two seconds, and then relax. Don't arch your back, make sure it's all through your upper back and those shoulder blade muscles. From the back, it's gonna look like this. Just pinch your shoulder blades together, pause one, two, and then relax. The next exercise is great to loosen up the muscles. They're called shoulder rolls. So what we're gonna do is kind of roll our shoulders clockwise five or six times, and then counterclockwise. When you're doing this, from the side it looks like this, you wanna make sure you're using your shoulder and your shoulder blade. The whole junction should be moving in a big clockwise motion and then a big counterclockwise motion. Now we're gonna do some isometrics, which means our arm's not gonna move. We're gonna put our other hand, if this is a shoulder that's painful, we're gonna put our other hand here and we're gonna push our arm out, but we're gonna hold it so our arm doesn't move and we're gonna hold for up to 10 seconds and this is external rotation. What they find is when you don't move your arm, it's much more safe initially than moving it. So we're gonna hold for 10 seconds and external or pressing out, 
and then we're gonna take that same arm, press it on the inside, and we're gonna press our arm inwards and hold for 10 seconds. Now try to work up to holding for 30 seconds before you progress to level two exercises. Now we're gonna start level two exercises. So laying on your back with your arm bent with a light weight and the affected shoulder, we're gonna to try to slowly through the shoulder joint, lower the weight down and then come back up. You need to start with a light weight. Now often what you'll find with arthritis is you won't be able to get there all the way the first rep. So don't force it. The goal is that each rep you try to go farther down towards the floor. Now again, for those that have severe arthritis, if you get that hard end range, don't try to force it, just strengthen within that range of motion. But if you feel like you can stretch it, do so, but go slow. So that's external. Now the next one is internal or the opposite way, pressing this way. So we're gonna put our hand on our shoulder, stabilize it, and then pivoting through the shoulder, you're gonna go down and then come back up. Now with this one, go slow. Don't try to go the full way the first session. Just kind of go a little bit and see how it responds. If it goes okay, you can push more. If it flares up the next day, you did too much, you gotta let it calm down and then start at a lighter load. The next is a knee push-up. In a knee position with our arms about shoulder width apart, we're gonna lower down about part way and then come back. If this is too challenging, you can go against the wall initially, but what I want you to do is only go halfway the first session. And then if it feels better, so say you do it Monday, feels fine Wednesday, I want you to try to go a little bit lower. Don't go the full width or full depth the first session. To increase it, go onto your toes and then perform. Earlier in the video, we talked about the range of motion is lost in that abduction or lateral raise. So one of the exercises we're gonna do is that lateral raise to help build strength and range of motion in that. Now you're probably gonna find that you can't go all the way up, that's fine, so start a light weight and just do the range of motion that you can and then try to progress each session if it doesn't flare up. Another version of that is laying on your side, raise your arm out laterally, and try to go. Now once you break 90, gravity's gonna start pulling the weight down, so it's gonna get harder. So go slow, but sometimes people find that this is a better way to stretch and strengthen the shoulder than the standing version. Lastly, here are three great accessory exercises that use a small PT band. If you don't have one, there's a link in the video. So we're gonna put that band between our fingers, arms straight, and we're gonna press out using our shoulder blades. And keeping our core engaged, we're gonna raise up over our head as far as we can, but keeping pressure out to the shoulders, don't let your elbows bend. Elbows straight and up. From the side, it's gonna look like this. So elbows straight, press out, raise. With this, again, don't try to bend your back. So keep your core and your back engaged, and then try to get all the way overhead with time. Banded diagonal, with that same PT band, we're gonna have our arms straight, and we're gonna press down at a 45 degree and then up at a 45 degree. Now this band's pretty stiff, so I don't move a lot. If your band is less stiff, you might move more, but just go to tolerance, but keep those elbows straight, the arms pressed out, and drive up and back with both arms. This last exercise adds a ballistic component to help prepare your shoulder for things like throwing. So with that same PT band in a standing position, elbows straight, we're gonna have our arms out, we're gonna raise our arms up, but as we're doing that, we're gonna pulse pause, and then pulse on the way down. Now, if you wanna make it more challenging, you can pulse faster or harder, but this is gonna add that ballistic component to the shoulder, that's really helpful. A lot of people are recommended to do these aggressive, crazy stretches for the shoulder to help break up the adhesions of arthritis. Please don't do that. If there's structural changes to your shoulder and you crank on your shoulder really hard, there's a chance that it's gonna irritate the labrum and cause more damage. Some light dynamic stretches to help warm up the shoulder are helpful, but anything really aggressive or strenuous has a better chance of hurting you than helping you. X-rays are the best image for really confirming this diagnosis. And the three things that you're gonna look for is joint space narrowing, so a narrowing between the ball and socket, osteophytes, which are bone spurs, and then subchondral sclerosis. So those are changes to the bone underneath the joint. The last thing we're gonna talk about is does weather affect arthritis? And for anyone that's suffering from this, you already know the answer is yes. We have strong research and evidence now that shows that this does affect people with their pain and making it worse. Specifically, if it's lower temperatures, higher humidity, or higher barometric pressures. So I've had a few people that have actually found that exercises and other treatments haven't really helped, but they finally moved to a warmer, less humid climate, and it did help. So for some people, it may be worth it to think about exploring options of moving if other treatments have failed you. Thank you for watching our show on shoulder arthritis. There's a lot of misinformation about this and a lot of things that we can readily and easily do to help resolve our pain and improve our function. We hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, 
and then don't forget to turn on notifications.